quickly grab a seat, everyone, so we can get started. Um, well, we've got a good crowd. That is great. Uh, because for this session, we have with us today uh, Will Berry. He is the Chief Information Officer for Mars Wrigley. I competed against Mars Wrigley for the last eight years running Mondelez. They are a great company. In fact, two of the people who worked for me at Proctor just went to work for you guys. Uh, Ruben Cejudo, uh, who's in Nashville, you know, right now in, in, in PET, and uh, Sandra, who replaced me, had run the PET business globally. So I, I learned a whole lot about Mars Wrigley from some very close uh, friends. We also have the, the CEO from ERA, uh, who's with us today, and they're gonna really be sharing with, uh, with us about the best in class supply chains um, of the future and transformational leadership that uh, is necessary to deliver it. And with that, we'll roll an introduction video, please. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, my name is Fred Laluyo. I'm the president and CEO of, of ERA Technology. Uh, so happy to be here. Thanks for the event organizers to let ERA be a, be a sponsor of this really good event. I don't know about you, but I've truly enjoyed uh, the keynote session this morning. That was top notch. Learned a lot. Um, before I welcome Will um, on stage with me to have this fireside chat, I noticed that the chairs a kind of like COVID fireside chat. So maybe we can reduce the distance a little bit. All right, that would be better. Um, so I'm, I'm going to give you a quick, uh, quick introduction on, on ERA in, in five minutes, tell you a bit what, what we are all about. Personally, I spent the last 25 years of my career uh, helping large enterprises around the world perform better through many methodologies and technologies from analytics to data science to ERP to uh, building prior to era a company called Anaplan for uh, for cloud-based modeling and uh, uh, in that journey I realized that the demand for intelligent accurate timely close to the point of impact decisions was growing exponentially and that it could not be met by the supply unless we broke the the paradigm with a new set of technology so we launched era a bit more than five and a half years ago from scratch with a very simple vision uh, really digitizing decisions and transforming from an era of people making decisions supported by machines, data, collaboration platforms, tools, modeling platforms, and so on and so forth, to an era where we could have machines do actually the work, make and execute the decisions guided by the people. So when we started five and a half years ago, that concept was quite uh, avant-garde and, and foreign, but we partnered with uh, some of you in the room and of course with Mars and Will in really pioneering the, the, this kind of technology, make it real, put it into, uh, into production at full scale. 
Um, I like this, this next image because this is an image from the 80s. That's the uh, cockpit, I believe, of, uh, I think it's Columbia, but it's the shuttle, mid-80s, right? And this is how uh, technology was at that point in time, where you have the two pilots literally controlling and being bombarded by signals nonstop and having to control knowing that every tweak in one knob had an implication on the, on the shuttle. And, and the, the amount of training, the amount of, uh, of experience and expertise that is required to run this, this shuttle uh, is really similar to a lot the way your supply chains are running today. You need people who are expert, highly trained, who understand the dependencies. We heard this morning about uh, working across horizontally, not through silos. Think about this technology, and when you contrast it with this one, and this is SpaceX Dragon 2, where all this coordination, all this uh, um, uh, uh, you know, connection between the different elements that help drive uh, uh, the, 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 the shuttle are actually done by intelligence and, and, and programming, and the pilots are basically monitoring this. This is literally the, the Dragon uh, connecting to the ISS, and that is happening with the press of one button. So the, thing, the thinking for us was, how do we bring this kind of technology to supply chain? How do we make and allow non-digital native companies to benefit from uh, the, the best technologies that are available out there. So that's really what, what ERA is all about. And uh, the, the category that's being formed around this uh, technology is called decision intelligence. Gartner is now defining decision intelligence as one of the top trends for 2022. Uh, you're seeing a lot of definitions, not only about what decision intelligence is, but also what decision intelligence platform should be. And we define it as the digitization the augmentation and the automation of decision making, right? The words are all important, You're using digital technology to augment and automate decisions, meaning augmentation, making better and smarter decisions over time using machine learning, within systems that memorize all the decisions made over a period of time to improve the quality of the decisions, but also automation and execution, enabling the systems to actually uh, jump in and do the work whenever it's, it's possible, freeing the operators uh, uh, to actually focus on the, the corner cases and on monitoring this kind of technology. At a high level, this technology brings three practices together. Data and analytics, machine learning and artificial intelligence, and automation. And, and you have to actually bring all of that into a single environment to enable the full digitization of decision. Um, so that's what we're all about. And this decision intelligence platform really have several attributes that are important. Uh, they have to be connected outside and in. If you're going to digitize a decision in supply chain or elsewhere in the organization, you have to bring 100% of the information that is required for that decision to be made digitally in a normalized data model. Now, I hear initially what you're going to say is like, well, my environment is very complex. I've got multiple ERPs and WMSs and TMSs, and I feed my systems with external data sources. We know, and that's the first thing that we had to resolve for for, for our clients, but 100% of the information that is required, and I'm saying information, not just data, that is required to uh, make a digital decision has to be available in a normalized data model. The second thing is that the system is to run in real time. That's what gives you the scale. The system never goes to sleep. It's real time and always on. It's making decisions either on schedule or on event. If there is an event happening in your supply chain that requires a decision logic to be deployed and, a, and, a, and an action to be taken, the system will do that in 24 seven. And of course, it's giving you the scale. You don't think about your classification, A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z. Well, you know, you're using those classifications to allocate the limited amount of decision-making power to the, to the decisions that, imp that are the most important and critical for you. If you have that digital scale, you don't really need to think that way anymore. Thinking and learning. Thinking is actually not magic, right? It's basically configuration and programming. You have an event, you deploy decision logic, and then you run it at scale. Learning is really important especially uh, post-COVID and with uh, the great resignation and the gig economy where you know that the tribal knowledge erosion is a real problem in supply chain. 
being able to capture that tribal knowledge and allow the system to learn from the decisions that are being made over time is really, really critical and something that you should expect from a, a decision intelligent pl uh, platform. And the last point is autonomy, right? The system is running on its own, freeing you from being mon uh, uh, you know, stuck to your screen and responding, as I showed in the initial slide in the, in the cockpit. You're not responding to the signals and taking manual action. You're responding to uh, informed information coming from uh, an intelligence system. So uh, what does it deliver? And we'll talk with Will in a second. It's the, the, the intelligence and the scale that is required for your supply chain to cope in this increasingly complex world where decisions have to be made faster, they are more multidimensional, we heard about it this morning, have to be across, going through, uh, horizontal instead of vertical, and all of that is enabled through decision intelligence. As far as ERA is concerned, we basically are purpose-built a company for, uh, for that, uh, with that vision of decision intelligence. We build a platform called the Decision Cloud that brings the data, the intelligence, the automation, and the engagement capabilities. And I'll just uh, wrap up on this point, which is interesting. When you're thinking about decisions, you're trying to think about automation and trying to digitize the whole thing, but you still have moments where you need to put your hands back on the wheel and drive a what-if simulation or make a manual decision. So we've segmented basically the, the way decisions are being made with the human in the loop, basically leveraging the decision cloud to collect the data, to, to, to do the what-if analysis, to run the analytics, to the human on the loop where the system delivers fully form recommendation but requires the, the human operator to actually accept or reject or maybe modify the recommendation all the way to the human out of the loop where the system runs completely on its own, collects the data, deploys the decision logics, records the outcome and executes the decision back into the transactional system. And what's interesting and what we're learning working with our clients is that while the goal is always to get to a more automation you have to have the ability, just like in a self-driving car, whenever there is an incident that requires it, to put your hands back on the wheel. So um, that's, the, that's what uh, we built with the ARI Decision Cloud. Um, and of course, this is uh, allowing us and our customers to build uh, what we call skills, basically the digitized decisions across the supply chain. Uh, and, and what the point I would like to make on this one is, it's of course across the traditional areas of supply chain, but just echoing what I heard this morning again, being able to go horizontal and breaking the silos, those kind of digital technologies really help. But not, with, not just within supply chain, we're building connections between revenue management, supply chain and procurement and finance. So you have the extension of that horizontal views, um, uh, you know, going, going throughout the enterprise. So with that, I'll try to make it very fast, I hope it was fast enough, uh, but I'd like to welcome Will uh, with me on stage and we'll have that fireside chat. Thank you, Will, welcome. How are you? Good to see you. So Will, you're a Chicago man, so you didn't have to drive very far, um, but thank you for being here. Do you wanna introduce yourself, talk a little bit about what you do at Mars and, uh, and um, let's start from there? Yeah, sure, so hi everyone. Uh, nice to join you this afternoon. So I'm the global CIO and vice president of Mars Wrigley, uh, which is essentially about one half of Mars Incorporated. Our pet care business is slightly, slightly larger. Um, I've been with Mars for 18 years. I've only been in this role since January, so I'm about nine months into the, the global CIO role. Um, but Mars is a massive enterprise, so over 18 years I never really felt the need to, to leave because I was able to move um, across different business units and in different, uh, in different capacities, um, always in IT. So I led uh, corporate IT for, for Mars Inc. Um, that led to leading some of the very early business change initiatives like our first financial shared service and some other things that were not really IT. Um, in 2014, I came to Chicago, so I've been here for about eight years um, to lead Wrigley Americas. Uh, Wrigley was a, an acquired subsidiary of, of Mars, but largely independent. So I led Canada, US, and all Latin America for the Wrigley America's president. And then in uh, 2017, they asked me to lead the global merger of Wrigley and Mars's chocolate business into what is now uh, Mars Wrigley. So I led uh, in parallel 27 markets merging into this, <laughs> this massive uh, enterprise that we have today. Um, but why am I here at a supply chain conference? Yes. I think you know in, in 2019, I was asked to come out of that by Paul Wyrock, who's the global pet care president. 
and he said, listen, our supply chain really want to do this digital strategy transformation of supply chain, really want to trust you to go lead it with them. Yeah, and, and therefore I reported into Sandeep Dadlani, who's the global CDO, working across Mars Inc. again, pet care, human food, and yeah, the confectionery business to drive the, the supply chain transformation. And then the Mars Wrigley CIO uh, left to go become the pet care CIO, so he's a good friend. Um, and that gave me the opportunity with Andrew Clark and the leadership team to step in and, and guide, uh, guide this business again. So it's been a fun, it's been a fun journey. Yeah, and, and it's interesting for us when we talk with uh, with the pioneers of decision intelligence, whether it's someone coming from IT or coming from supply chain, doesn't really, we don't really hear the difference. And when we talk with Will, we don't really hear the difference whether you're from IT or from supply chain, you, you understand the problems exactly the same way. Um, but talk a little bit about the last uh, two, three years and uh, the massive disruption and transformation that, uh, that impacted Mars. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, look, I think when they asked me to do this, the supply chain transformation in 2019, I think the board really wanted to do it. I think um, it, was, it was really anchored in improving our customer service levels to the customer. Um, but the, the, the path to get there was, was very ambiguous. It wasn't clearly defined. So I really had to spend a year really defining what is supply chain transformation for Mars and kind of flew all over the world talking to you know, companies that are here today, I'm sure, um, tech companies, um, logistics companies like UPS to really understand what does digital mean, mean to their supply chain, to really identify what was, what was right for Mars. And um, at the macro level, our supply chain was built for scale. It was sequential. It moved from the factory for scale, like kind of pre-World War, right? Yep. All the way to the, all the way to the customer, and it was sequential and siloed. Our business processes, our, our IT systems, um, and that just wasn't going to give us the agility and the resilience that was we thought we needed. Now this predates COVID, so that's pre-COVID. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what I was trying to do is help them rewire that into a complex system. You had the logo of the brain up there, right? And look at digitally interconnecting all the pieces of the supply chain to really operationally run it as a holistic end-to-end -end system, as opposed to decisions made in silo. Um, so when we did that, each piece, whether it was in the, in the factories or logistics or, um, or even, even uh, the, the outbound to the customer, um, it was about looking at our supply chain systems of record and making sure they were gonna go on that journey with us. And mm -hmm. that took a lot of upgrading, to be, to be honest, um, with the help of a lot of tech partners that are, that are in the audience today. Um, it also meant, going after that end-to-end -end visibility with data and analytics, right, which, which we talked about, and we'll talk about um, speed and, and some of the complexity in doing that. And then lastly, I really wanted to move to kind of predictive, to prescriptive, to automated, right, to try to take the, as much as we can, shake that decision-making and that work out, right, and really embrace uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So that's, that's what we did, you know, and, and some of the three-year journey in that space was uh, a move to concurrent planning, in kind of how we do demand and supply chain planning, um, uh, transportation uh, logistic control towers, which we now have deployed globally, um, standing up the data analytics function for supply chain, which is embedded in supply chain, not in the IT organization. Um, and then, you know, looking at then also, you know, digital manufacturing and how do we really get this uh, muscle going. So it's been a fun journey. You started that journey before COVID, obviously. Yeah. We're talking yeah. about 2019. Um, how did, how did uh, COVID impact? Um, did it slow you down? Did it accelerate the need for change? What can you talk about that? It, it definitely accelerated it. Um, actually, when COVID hit, I went, geez, I wish we would have started this in 2017 and not, not 2019. <laughs> um, but you know, I think um, where we saw the, the massive acceleration was really in the advanced analytics space. Um, where leaders in supply chain, in the business, were saying, just come help us, right? Yeah. We gotta keep the factories running, we can't bother people, wanna focus on making quality products and getting them out. Can you guys just drop in and tell us what's going on with the consumer, what's going on with channel mix shifts? Can we, can we get a handle on this? And that's where we saw the acceleration. All of a sudden, that change management, where people don't want to work differently, just changed overnight. What about yeah. um, the, the, uh, the loss of the tribal knowledge that I discussed briefly earlier and uh, the great resignation? Is it something that you felt like you, you don't have the amount of people required to do actually do the work and make the decisions? Or do you feel an erosion of, uh, of that, that core knowledge? Yeah, I mean, we're feeling that now, yeah. right? Labor shortage not, is a not real thing. Not three years ago, yeah. yeah. Labor shortage is a real thing. The war on talent's a, 
a real thing. Um, you know, the economy, uh, the headwinds, uh, the geopolitical stuff going on out there. I mean, it's, it's changed. I mean, COVID was a disruptor. Now the complexity that we're under, under duress is, is infinitely more than even what, what COVID was, right? So um, the way we're driving that is really data analytics can be helped yeah. in terms of offsetting labor shortages. So can newer emerging areas like advanced automation and yeah. physical automation and some of these things that we're now kind of the next horizon of supply chain transformation are, are heading into. So, so you talked about 2019, you're looking at analytics, um, you talked about um, recommendations, automations already. Let's talk a little bit about the, your, your journey with decision intelligence, how we're framing it today. When you and I started talking, I don't think it was framed as decision intelligence, but thank God Gartner is here and now it's called decision intelligence. Um, and execution, I guess we should say. But talk a little bit about your, your journey and Mars's journey in, uh, uh, with, that, with that technology. Where, where are you, what have you done? Yeah, I think, um, I'm glad they finally have a title for it. Yeah, it's helpful. That. It's That's helping helpful all of us. because <laughs> I think when I, early days of me really understanding what Arrow was, was all about and trying to get my head around how would Mars partner with you, right? I think every time we got into a, a <laughs> conference room to kind of present the topic to senior executives or supply chain leaders, it was almost thought of as a competition of what you weren't. Right, whether that was in planning or logistics and other stuff. Um, but what I really liked about it was some of the things you highlighted kind of in your overarching theme. What was slowing us down, A, was the data, right? Just assembling the data on our data lake and having my data engineers build data assets at scale fundamentally was taking forever, right? Mm -hmm. And we were doing it. So therefore, the advanced analytics was taking forever to come because the data wasn't there. So I think the ability for ERA to have that common data model um, across all our various ERPs and supply chain systems was, was number one, right? So it was about speed. Um, number two was, you know, I talked about AI and ML. I think the, the fact that your platform allowed your engineers to help us design and, and configure AI, but it was open enough to allow my data scientists exactly. to come in and, and be self-sufficient on the platform was, I thought was a macro advantage. All right, um, and then the third was kind of, now we're touching on that with the labor shortage thing, but I just gotta automate this business, right? And very few platforms have that ability to go up, fine tune, and then actually push, orchestrate that change back down. Yeah. Especially if you're talking about multiple parts of the supply chain and, and what I'm trying to do. So um, I saw it, it's things, you know, timing's always kind of the, the thing. When's the right time to embrace it? And now I'm really seeing the fruits of our our labor come through, I'm now seeing the turn, right, where people are getting it. Yeah, and, and what you guys did was smart, right? Started with, I think it was one division in the UK doing okay. one pilot, pulling all that data into ERA in a matter of weeks, deploying the logic, testing, and then gradually expanding, going from, from this end-to-end -end visibility, real-time visibility, to then, next question, root cause analysis. Wow, we can see now that we have issues that we couldn't see before. There are correlation that we don't understand. Can ERA help, again, with, with your, your folks, our folks, working on the RCAs. Now you got the RCA, you understand why the issues are happening. So what? How do you prevent them from happening? That's where automation comes. That's where the ability to capture the event, where it's happening, allows you to actually yeah. treat it. And, and you went from one division, one country, to you know, a rollout that's, uh, that's happening right now. I think it's a, it's a smart approach. Um, and speed, you guys were moving pretty fast. It, all fe it always feels... It's like pedaling on the bike on a hill. It feels like you're not moving, but you're actually moving quite fast. You guys were moving pretty fast. Yeah, I think we were moving fast on the um, putting the supply, we call them associates, but putting the supply chain associates at the heart of solving the problem, right? Yeah. So that's one, getting out of kind of the, the conference tower at, in the headquarters and really working with, the, like, let's call it the end user in, in this way. Um, second was, you know, use design thinking and kind of you know, go after a use case and do an MVP and, and do a lot of those and eventually you would get scale. I think the challenge is that scale just wasn't coming, right? Mm -hmm. And if we want to move from advantage to competitive advantage, which is what I'm trying to do, we can't just do the proof of value and proof of value and proof of value and not go after scale, right? So, so, so the scale thing is, is, is mega important to going from like advantage to competitive advantage when you're an enterprise this big. Well, well, it's very interesting for, for us as, as your partner on this one is that Mars was 
project was started right at the beginning of COVID or weeks before COVID. So you start this with thinking about design workshops and in-person meetings and overnight, uh, we're doing all of that digitally. So we had to learn how to, how to optimize the approach and the tools to actually do this rollout uh, in, the, in the middle of COVID. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, about adoptions. Because we're talking about a dis technology and an approach here, decision intelligence, that, that does the work for you. Meaning that some of the business operators, whether they're in logistics, whether they're in uh, uh, planning, they, they are now adopting and working side by side with the technology that, that does a lot of the work. How is that working out? How is adoption going? It's always a big, uh, big topic because we're not talking here about a slightly better version of the same old planning tool that's now in the cloud and running faster. We're talking about, as I said, a tool that does the work. That, so a the, the lot of changes that needs to happen and, and adoption. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, I always say, look, at these are not system projects or digital. You know, digital is not an, a, an IT thing, right? It's really a behavior and a, yeah. and a human change, a change uh, that has to happen. And, don't underestimate that. I mean, it's still a core part of the strategy is the talent, right? And, and really bringing all associates on that journey with us. And it's, it's, it's not easy, right? I think um, people are proud of the expertise that they've built over many years of their careers, um, like, like you and I would be, right? <laughs> um, I think there's a lot of bias, right? Um, and I think, you know, never miss, you know, never miss a good crisis, right? I think COVID made us go yeah. do things differently and there was no bias. No one knew what was going on. And now the current headwinds, you can really see the exposure. Like it's exposed bad business practices, bad business processes. It's exposed um, biases in the systems, you know, and, and now we just gotta, we just gotta, you know, bring that change agenda along with us. So that's the biggest part. So you are our client, so I'm very careful not to take you to a, an area you're not comfortable, but I spoke at a high level about how uh, you deploy the technology and, and decision intelligence. Can you talk a little bit more specifically about the areas where it's been deployed and some of the, the use cases, or you want to skip that? <laughs> it's totally cool. No, 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 it's okay. I mean, look, it, when we're talking about customer service level improvement as a macro topic, it comes down to do we have the right products in the right locations to service orders in full and on time? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, let's just, like, you're all supply chain leaders, so you get this. I, I'm not, right? I kind <laughs> of am now. Um, but uh, I think when you look at that, it's about, you know, again, optimizing your inventory positions, rebalancing. I think it's about um, looking at, you know, what's causing a, an unfulfilled order or a cut order, right? Uh, understanding all that, that knowledge, it just, in our ERP, it's broken, right? People think they know the answer and it's being done in silos and no one really knows the reason, right? So where the decision intelligence comes in is, you don't know, don't pretend you know, let's get the analytics on what it is and then let's, let's use the automation to orchestrate those changes in the supply chain. Yeah, so specifically on that one, it's literally pulling all the data, harmonizing into the, the cognitive data layer and then deploying the decision logic to make real-time recommendation on how to rebalance inventories between DC as an example, right? Yeah. And then the users get that information, is get it's fully automated, or on corner cases, it goes in front of an operator for, for validation. And without going into the, the, the secrets in terms of uh, uh, return and, and improvement, I think the, we can say that the, the, the performance improvement as a result has been quite, quite significant. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of the journey that we went on. I mean, it was a bit of a slow burn, you know, to get there in 2019, but. I'm feeling really good about the momentum that we've got, yeah. right? And the momentum that, at least while I'm in this seat now as the CIO, um, if you look at the core of my global strategy, right, it's really about becoming more consumer obsessed than customer obsessed, right? So we really got to meet the consumer with what they want wherever they are, digital or, or physical. But then really going after this end-to-end -end value chain at scale, and it goes beyond supply chain. I mean, it gets now into procurement, raw materials and, and packaging material uh, procurement all the way into the supply chain, all the way out, all the way out to the route to market, right? Yeah. So really now taking what was supply chain and going bigger. And that's the interest, interesting part that, uh, that we see with, with all our clients in CPG, in oil and gas, in, in uh, life sciences, is you start somewhere, be it procurement, be it uh, demand sensing, be it logistics and, and inventory optimization, planning, doesn't matter, it starts somewhere, and gradually you start expanding. Um, I, I mentioned, we were chatting earlier, some of our clients are now doing, they're digitizing decisions that are, that are not currently made. So 
the thought process when you think about let's let's deploy a digital technology to digital decisions you go where are the decisions that are getting increasingly complex that we don't make on time where classification is clearly showing some some weaknesses um, and that's where you first deploy the technology and you get the return but gradually we're seeing our clients moving toward what are the decisions that we are not making today that we could be making if we had a digital technology why are we not making them today too complex by the time your analysis is done the event is moved on so we talked about for example with one of our clients we have done a partnership with WPP yep. the, the, the media company yep. and we built a skill that connects media spend promotions and all those elements that help drive demand to your supply chain level so that every dollar that you spend on a promotion um, actually delivers a dollar of sell and not increase the stock out levels that you may have somewhere else so connecting dots or we're yep. talking about uh, uh, gray markets and, uh, and you know those are you know trades in Europe that are happening internally that could actually destroy a ton of value where the technology needs to call out this order might actually be problematic you should review it and unless you capture it in real time then you know you just if you let it go it's too late so there's then the only thing you can do is an analysis five weeks later and say this is wrong let's try to change something but the reality is it's too late so bringing bringing this kind of technology to help make decisions at the point of impact in real time but having the ability to filter out all the noise and to automate 90 percent of the, the decision so that your operators can only focus on on the where, where their their human uh, knowledge so to speak is uh, is required is super important and along with that allowing you as the owner of the technology to build your own knowledge your own your own know-how um, and, and the, you know you're allowing the technology to actually run decisions for you you got to be on top of it and you have you were saying it earlier you have your own teams now building and maintaining yeah. skills and, and, and leveraging era as the, as the platform provider. We have just a few minutes left, and, and I think it'd be great for, you, for, for us to hear your, your advice, right? So for those of you who are thinking about uh, launching yourself in, uh, in a uh, you know, decision intelligence journey, what, what, uh, what have we learned here together that, that we can share? Yeah, I mean, I think the advice I, I'm, like, I consider myself fortunate. I've been in IT for 18 years, right, which seems like a, a massive amount, and I've, I've seen the role go from completely back office and kind of system implementation where the decision's been made somewhere else to, you know, I think this is where Mars got it right, complete front office, right? So I sit on the LP yeah. with the CEO. Like, my strategy is not any different than the enterprise strategy, not any different than the supply chain strategy, right? So I think if you can embrace that in, the, in this digital era that we're in, um, I think you stand a really good chance of success. When Mike Karabach, who's the Mars Wrigley you know, chief yep. supply officer, Mike's a, a dear friend, when he talks or I talk, you would almost not know who's driving IT and who's driving supply. Totally. It's, it's, it's really come a long way in the relationship and the, in the partnership and the trust, yeah? Um, and that goes all the way up to the CEO level. So I think, you know, don't underestimate the change agenda that you're under. That's the first topic that we talked about. Um, but you know, don't look at as IT as the IT that you know I grew up leading, or you know, you know, or fathers grew up leading, right, or mothers, right. It's 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 evolved, and and if you can embrace it, and if you got the right uh, CIOs or IT leaders that are embracing that, that are you know intellectually curious about the supply chain problems, not what system do we put in, right? Yeah, I think for us, from our vantage point, it's kind of interesting. All our clients, a large organization like yours. We, when we come in and we're in a room and we don't know who is IT and who is supply chain, that's a good sign. When you kind of know exactly how to tag people, it means they're gonna be, it's gonna be slow. In the case of Mars, yeah, whether it's Mark or you, just like same dialogue. There's another anecdote that I think we can bring in the last uh, few seconds that we have. Um, mistakes that we've made uh, jointly, right? And we take our, our share, but worth, worth sharing. When we started at the first pilot, you guys said, okay, this is how we make decisions. And we understand how decisions are being made. So we digitize that. And then we roll it out. And then we realize at the point of impact, the business operator is saying, 
That's not how we make decisions. Decisions are actually different. So the, the interesting point, again, that was a few years back, is really work with the business operators to validate your own, I want to say you is not ERA, is, is, is Mars, right? Your own understanding of how decisions are really made because there's always a gap between how you think decisions are made and how they're really made. Now, you bring that into a digital tool, you can't lie anymore and you can't, you can't get this wrong. Will, zero seconds left. Thank you so much for, for sharing your insights and for being such a, a great partner. Uh, lovely to have you and uh, love you to chat with you today. Thank Thanks you for inviting me.